Hey everyone, welcome. We are live. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, this is the Wendy Cooper Show and it's Wendy Cooper speaking of age. Um, I don't know if my lighting's right and it is Facebook Live and it's my launch and I'm so happy to have uh, this guy. Uh, Blair Taylor is here He's today with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey Wendy. Hey Blair, thanks for joining me. Of course, how are you? I'm good. Uh, uh, congratulations, by the way, on this fun little setup you have going on. Yeah, well, cool. you know, I decided to do the show from, I decided to take it away from doing podcasting because right. podcasting is impossible to, to build an audience. And, um, and to just go back to live, as you know, being the record holder for the most appearances on my show. <laughs> on every... Every iteration of every show that you've ever done, I think I've been on. Yeah. Uh huh. And now look at us. You're in your beautiful home in the Hollywood Hills. Thank you. And Close. I'm in my beautiful home on the coast of Malibu. You know, life is rough, right? Life That's is right. Rough. Life is rough. Life is really rough. But anyway, Blair, you mm -hmm. are um, just to set it up a little bit for people mm -hmm. who 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 know me and know you. You don't really care what I'm gonna what I'm about to say, but for those of you that don't know, <laughs> I do. Um, Blair is the owner and uh, of Blair uh, of uh, Taylor Talent Services. Taylor Talent. Yeah, how do you mess that up? How do you mess that up? I don't know. It's the two T's. Taylor right? Talent Services. Yes. Ta Taylor Talent Services, because yep. his name is Blair Taylor. But Blair, you've been in the business since about 1997. Yep. And yep. you have represented, mm -hmm. it, it's it's interesting because you have a niche that you represent. Mm -hmm. You represent basically hosts, but now representing hosts, so let's let's go down the list. That's okay. uh, TV hosts, news hosts, hosts for infomercials, hosts for, let's say, live shopping, hosts. Yeah, you know, how would you define a Correct. host as opposed to? So, you know, it's, the definition is changing a little bit. Um, I, we traditionally would think of a host like a game show host, like the Chuck Woolery or, uh, you know, a, an Alex Trebek or someone that would host um, uh, a TV show. And I started representing product experts and product hosts, um, people that would host infomercials and host uh products on Home Shopping Network or QVC, and they were very specific to that need. It was it was kind of the yell and sell, the, the pitch person, um, actually. And over time, that has kind of shifted from uh, their traditional uh, role of being a host to product experts who are actually taking on a hosting role and, uh, and kind of taking that away. So the traditional host is kind of being replaced by experts, um, even if you watch shows on Discovery Channel, like, um, uh, wow, all of, the, all of them, all the Discovery Channel shows, they're actually being hosted by people that are experts in their field. Is that is is that kind of like saying, uh, doing the comparison, and I hate to do this comparison because, you know, rest in peace, Anthony Bourdain, but Anthony Bourdain would be yeah. almost like a per perfect example of an expert host. Yeah, in fact, I think it's even a little bit more because I don't know that uh, Anthony Bourdain had a specialty or an expertise that carried him through. He he was just very knowledgeable in that area. But I like I represent doctors and surgeons. Well, Anthony are, Bourdain Blair was a chef. Uh, you know, you know I'm a, I'm a light eater. I didn't even know that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's how he uh, got it started. He wrote a book, like the okay. crazy, wacky behind the scenes of being a chef in New York or something. Oh, okay. And he like opened up the doors to all of these, you know, like like the behind the scenes of what it's really like in the kitchen. Right. I think it, did he do a show based on that? I, yeah, and he did a show based on that. Yeah, rest, rest, restaurant thing. Yeah. I um I didn't realize that actually. Or, or I forgot well, about you it, did. You, you just forgot about it. Yeah, I, was, you, I was gone that day. Yeah, um, he just said no to your phone call. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but that's it. But then he would be a great example of someone that actually is an expert in their field and can speak to a place of authority on that. And and they're bringing those people in. I mean, why have someone that acts as an authority about something when you can actually just bring an authority in who who knows that and can, who can speak about that? Right. And that's, you know, that's that's kind of super important for products that are 
you know, it's not easy. Let's let's just say this. It's not easy to find the right face for a product. Right. Right? I mean, is right, it for that? many reasons. Right. Right. Of course. And I'm not saying literally the right face for a product, but right. literally the right match, the brand that really matches the host, the host that goes along, because it's not just about showing up and shooting. It's also has this long term uh, connection. Right. Well, you're, build, you're building relationships that could that could last years and years and years. And so you want someone who organically matches the product um, that that appreciates it, that uses it. You know, the um, people expect that there was a point in time where uh, celebrities would just get paid to endorse products. And that still happens. But quite often now the celebrities have a choice and they they're given many options and they want to they want to it's equally as important for them to match with the brand as it is for that brand to match with that celebrity. I want to do a little, I know that this is my first time on this show and doing Facebook Live. So I do want to do, I think this is like the protocol. You're supposed to say, hey, Renee, thanks for joining us. There's Renee is here. Hi, Renee. I have Hi, no Renee. idea. I'm not seeing the scroll. I think you see it on your end, but I, 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 see I just that. see a big picture of you, Wendy. Oh, you do? Yeah. That's it? Well, you're so lucky. I picture you a little tiny picture of me. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I know what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Renee, that's awesome that you're sending me all of these messages. But during the show, I really can't. Um, I really <laughs> can't talk to you. <laughs> She's overloaded. <laughs> She's Renee, laughing. She's busy. She's, <laughs> She's working. Oh, oh, you're doing a show. Uh, but thanks for watching. Um, okay, Blair. So there's a huge thing happening we're going to get mm -hmm. to influencers and we're going to get to all of that and we're going yeah. to get to deal making a little bit about deal making because i really do like to talk about that especially how it's probably changing in the in the climate of everything that's happening on social media mm -hmm. right um but uh there is this movement and that is why my show is now the wendy cooper show speaking of age <laughs> Age. Tomorrow it'll be something different. <laughs> this week. <laughs> for, now, <laughs> for now, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and anyway, there's this whole pro-age movement uh, that's happening on Instagram. There are influencers of the kazoo of women with you know the silver hair movement that's there. They right. the over 50, the pro-age, the fit over 60. I mean, look at Chris, um, Chris Steele. You know, mm -hmm. he's got this whole thing going on where I think he did fit over 40. Did yeah. he fit over 40? And yeah. then I found out he was over 50. And, I, and I'm thinking, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, it's still true. He's uh, okay. over 40. <laughs> he is over 40. Yeah. But my, I think he just turned 50, actually. He did. He yeah. did. Yeah. And he has he looks better than he's ever looked. Yep. I yep. mean, this guy, he, he looks like he's 35, number one. Yep. Number two, his body is rocking it. But... Yep. There's this whole surge and this whole, um, well, this whole surge, I'll say it again for the fourth time, uh, that's happening on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram is huge, by the way. Instagram is so much bigger than Mega Facebook. Huge. It's really so stupid. It's like yep. huge. Uh, so I wanted to talk about- Well, you about, know, Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yes, but it doesn't matter. It's completely two Correct. different social media yeah, you know, things. Um, but what do, you, uh, what do you make of, you know, uh, of of the transition as we as we get older. I've been a host. I am, I am a host. <laughs> but I mean, I've been a host when I was younger on live yeah. television and and yeah. shows and commercials and blah blah blah. blah. And yeah. then we have all of our friends and our colleagues that are the same. But mm -hmm. they do go through this transition in life where they start to become older. Mm -hmm. And so what? What changes for them from your perspective as an agent? What what changes for them in their in their world? Well, I think the thing that's really important, and it's been something that we've been telling our clients for a long time, which is you have to get on social media. You have to be involved in social media. So those hosts that had very successful careers, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago that are seeing it kind of quiet down for them um, have realized that if they want to stay relevant, they have to get on social media. And it's been one of these things, I think, I'm 52, so I, I'm at the generation where I'm on Instagram, but I'm on Instagram as a viewer and as a stalker and not as someone who actively uses it. And I think people that are younger actively use it, people that are older are just not used to it. And they're, it, it's, it's foreign to, to us. And so those people that are willing to jump on that bandwagon, learn it, um, 
they can capture quite a big audience and they can, you know, you have to be adaptive and you have to adapt to your environment in, in the changes that are happening in the business. So the people that are doing that, like Chris Steele, are getting to reap the rewards of that extra work. I have someone else has joined us. Thank you okay. for that. Thank you for that. But it is Facebook Live, so I'm supposed to engage with these people. Someone mm -hmm. else has joined us and he, oh, has a, no. he has a question for you. I hope you can see it. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Is that Blair's? <laughs> Yes. Tom Jordan, this is my house. It's still the bank. It's actually still the bank's house. Um, <laughs> it'll be my house and my partner's house in 28 years. Yes, but and Tom, it's 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 at the <laughs> very top of the Hollywood Hills. It's uh, the view is gorgeous. You See, I have this house, but but I, I owe money on it. You know, that guy's already paid his house off and he, he's you know. And by the but, way, I've been to his house, he is a beautiful home. I'm sure he does. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining us. I'm really happy that you're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's writing stuff, isn't he? Yes, there's another one. <laughs> I'm taking so, a shot every time he's <laughs> so, so for those, those, those watching, Renee is the other person watching. But you know, in the rebroadcast, everybody is going to, a lot we of people. Two, wait, watching. we have two people watching? Well, yeah, we have two oh, people. Oh my that gosh, I, I would have comb my hair if I knew that. <laughs> But but what's going to happen is, um, oh, so Tom's taking a shot, but I lost my train of thought of what I was going to say. But anyway, okay, Tom, goodbye, Tom. Tom, 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 Tom Jordan. Tom. There, I blocked, I, I turned you off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now he can come back, but, uh, yeah. oh, Tom Jordan, for those of you that are going to be watching, Tom Jordan is is the host that is he's just a really great host. He's been around for a very long time and, and you've represented him. Yeah. And Tom actually is one of the reasons that I wanted to ask you about this transition that people go through when they, they start to get a little bit older. Yep. Tom, Tom let his natural uh, silver hair grow out. And, I, and I've known this- Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yeah. But I've known that more salt than pepper. I'm waiting for him to, <laughs> to show me what he's I'm trying say. to cover for him. <laughs> but but it's yeah. I think he looks awesome. And yeah. I think that he probably I think he got a lot more work. He you know what it's really interesting. So for those of you who don't know Tom, he is the spokesperson for LifeLock. And LifeLock has been on the air probably for three years. And uh yeah, you know, I think it's really great. I think it's great when a, when anyone, whether you're an actor or or you're not an actor, you can just kind of embrace who you really are and let yourself go and let yourself be. And, and Tom took a risk. He knew that that, that would be risk taking to do that and let his hair grow or go natural. And people love it. It looks really, really good. And the thing that I think is really important, and, and I've had other clients who have taken his lead and some of my female clients aren't necessarily interested in letting their hair go gray at this point, but they get great wigs. They're willing to kind of dip that toe in the water a little bit, which has been really great. Um, but also you have to understand that when it comes to television, we're still appealing to that old, there's an older audience watching TV. You know, it, it's not the younger kids. So for those, for those that are used to hosting on television, you still have to, your generation is just, we're all aging. We're just starting to get a little bit older and you've got to step into that, into that. Um, yeah. From the from the marketing perspective, so we've been around both of us for a very long time, and I have to say that you know I'm actually letting mine grow. Look, mm -hmm. see that? Yep, well, it's and, good. Well, we'll see. Look at that; it's crazy. And look at mine. I look like Cruella. Look I look like Cruella. No, no. <laughs> but um, but here's my point: is is that I think that there is so much work out there for talent in the over 60 category because yes, there's it's a huge demographic. It's 50 million people are between 54, 55 and 65 years old yep, right now. Yep. One every 13 sec every minute, 13 people turn 60 years old. Every what? A lot of numbers. Right, a lot of numbers. <laughs> Blair's not that quick. 13, on one minute, 60. Don't have, don't have him run your numbers. <laughs> Every minute, 13 people turn 60 years old. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure to be looking at you. So that is a huge target demographic. 
So yeah. of course, people, I, I, do you know how many people I know that have let their hair go silver or gray or salt and pepper and their careers have exploded? Of there course. are there are women influencers on Instagram mm -hmm. that have a whole new career, yep. a whole new career because they suddenly at the age of 55, 60 became models. Yep, it's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, there's, yeah, there, there's a commercial out there right now and I can't remember the product, but they, but it's this gorgeous woman. She has this beautiful gray hair. I think she's 70. It says, I think it says her age. And uh, and she just looks just classically beautiful, and yeah. um, and she embraces it. And I think yeah. I, I I have a lot of uh, people I know in the business that have allow, allowed themselves to age gracefully, and in doing so, they they definitely are getting work for sure. Yeah, there's I don't know if you know Deirdre Wilson. Deirdre Wilson, she let her hair grow up, grow silver. She's been in a few of the shows that I've done. I'm sure if you saw a picture of her, she's been around for a while. Yeah. She's She's rocking it. I mean, yeah. her whole career completely exploded because she's got naturally beautiful silver hair that she was dying red for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so Kelly McCord, she's asking us, mm -hmm. Kelly McCord Brown. Thanks for joining us, by the way, Kelly. Hey, what Kelly. age should you start giving it up and going salt and pepper? Well, I think you should match your age, and, and, and what I mean by that is some people, like I, I start getting gray earlier than typical, so I think it, I think if you're in your 30s and you're already going gray, it's okay to cover that up. I think if you're in your 40s and you're starting to grow gray, it's okay to cover it up. I think if you're hitting your 60s, there, it's, there's an expectation that when you're hitting your 60s and your 70s that- They're gray. You look, you have to look your age. By the way, it, it, not only are we talking about hair color, we're talking about injections. We're talking about that desire to age yourself down because people think that the business all lies in the youth. So I think, you know, you have to transition all of who you are into, into that, the age that you are. So if you're in your 60s and you're still dyeing your hair jet black, I think that's a problem. <laughs> did you did you ever tell Burt Reynolds that? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no, but I mean that's when it starts looking weird. But from a it looks weird. It looks weird, right? It looks weird. From a professional standpoint, so so here's this huge target market, this yep. huge demographic. I'm sure from your perspective as a talent agent and coming through the years, because you've have a you know, I did an interview with Darla Hahn mm -hmm. and that that that's in my podcast, it was a beautiful interview. Yeah. And she spoke, Darla spoke about, about how difficult it's really been for her to yeah. go through this transition and into what we call the second half of life and yeah. making those adjustments. And Darla know? is exactly one of those people that I was referencing who's reached out to me and said, hey, I think I'm gonna give this a try, you know? And, and I think it'll be great for her to do that. But it's hard. It's hard when you, in someone like a Darla who is gorgeous and she is in shape and she's fit, she's got everything going on. And then as we start to get old, those things that we may have relied on a little bit for our work start to change. And so rather than embracing the new change, we want to continue to hold on to that, which used to secure us opportunities. And those are opportunities aren't there, but new ones are there. And so you have to be willing to step into just something new by embracing who you are now instead of who you were then. You know, it's funny, Blair. It's really great because the the reason that I am doing this iteration of the show is because mm -hmm. I went, I, I I stopped for about two years. I think it was two years. And I really, when I came back to doing a show, and the reason I'm doing Facebook Live is because my old shows were always live video or live. And mm -hmm. then I did this podcast that was like, I'm overproducing it and you know, it was stupid. Right. Um, beautiful interviews, by the way, don't think that any of the interviews that I did that are on my podcast are not worthy. They're gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, soulful interviews. But um, I kept hearing this, embrace my age, share my wisdom, embrace my age, share my wisdom, embrace mm -hmm. my age, share my wisdom. And that's mm -hmm. the whole thing is that it's difficult to do, especially when you're in entertainment or you're on television or in any limelight or anything yep. like this. It's very, very difficult. And getting through that transition, 
I, it's, it's, it's even more difficult because, you know, we were laughing, we were all together in San Diego about a year ago. And I said, Oh, I've got a great idea for a, for a Netflix show where it would be me and Darla and we lived together. And we had like TVs all over the house playing our old videos of when we were young. So we could remember. Right. We right, right, right. <laughs> and it was a funny idea, but that comes really from the soul, you know, mm -hmm. of, of thinking about, you know, where am I in my life and how do I move forward with really the only thing that I really know how to do, which is to be a great host, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you know? And I think we're also, we haven't, culturally we're not a society that kind of embraces our elders a little bit in that way. And we, you know, I was very fortunate. I had a grandmother who lived until just three days shy of her 104th birthday. And I was always learning from her, you know, until the end. And I, that's something I really cherish is a chance to, to really continue to look up to her and to, to hear what she had to say, because it was important. What she had to say was important. And I think sometimes we feel that we're, we're stepping into a place where we may not feel important anymore as we age. I think that's unfortunate. Yeah, as we go into the second half of life, it's a real big transition. It's a, re it's a real thing. I mean, yeah. it's a real thing to know that, you know, uh, we're not hunting and gathering anymore, right? We're kind of, you know, going into our stores. Right, we're, right. We're, and, and they're going to run out. That means yeah. time, people. We're running yeah. out of time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but Do you see uh, Tom's ahead. comment? Do you see Tom's yeah. comment that just yeah. popped up? Yeah, and Nicole, can you read it? Because you're looking awfully yeah. strange. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> Oh, I'm just tired. It says here, in the yeah. spots I produce, the hardest role to cast is attractive silver-haired women. They yeah. should, uh, it, what he's saying is basically everybody should kind of go for it, right? Yeah. And I think Tom knows knows Deirdre, and um, and and it and it's true. So yeah. Tom, if and you Tom's want to chime in a little bit more, Tom about produces that. a lot of content for a very well-known beauty brand, and uh, and. This has been some. This is something that comes up a lot. I see it, and Tom mentioned it, and I've heard this from from others as well. When when they're casting and they want a beautiful, you know, older woman in her sixties, it's really hard to find, and not because there aren't beautiful older women in their sixties, but those women are still trying to look forty five. Yeah. So it's really hard to find people that really embrace who they are in, in that way. Well, so here's the the take home. Hey, Olivia, if you're still watching, Blair says hello. I say hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's move on a little bit about uh, what is it? How do you deal with influencers? Like on your website. Poorly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it's because I, I know that uh, I know I have a lot of people on Instagram. I don't have that many people that follow me on my Wendy is ageless. I have mm -hmm. maybe 500 people mm -hmm. if I'm lucky on a good yeah. day. Right. But I do have a tribe the, of those 500 people. They have a lot of influence. Right. So of it's course. kind of. Of quality over quantity. That's right. Um, but I know that you know eventually they probably will watch this. And what do you have any recommendations for them? Because when you're an influencer, mm -hmm. this it's probably very new to you. And I'm talking about women over 50, 60, 70. Yep. I'm not I'm not talking about the younger influencers. Right, right, I right. Don't give a crap about them. Yep. Right. They got it easy. Uh, but what is it? Are there certain deal points? Is there is it very different than being a, a host or or a, a face of a brand? Then totally, it's yeah, totally okay. different. And, Can and, we talk and, a little bit about that? Yeah. So so the first thing is is the um, one of the myths or fallacies is that you have to have a ton of followers um, to make money as an influencer. And what I mean by that is that there are there are some very high profile celebrities with. 125 million followers and you hear about these big deals that they get um, but I it's funny I actually had a conversation with with a producer yesterday who said to me I want to hit about five to ten million uh, folks but I don't want to do it with one influencer I want to do it with like 15 influencers because when they have a smaller audience, they will, audience. they will engage with them more they will speak to them um, and I think that's really, really important is you don't have to have, you can have under a hundred thousand followers, but if you engage with them and they trust you, then 
there's a tremendous value to that. There's an there's something called an engagement rate, which um, I'm sure most people know, but it's it's you put out a post and how many people are going to respond back to that post and engage you on the information that you're sharing with them. So you can be an influencer and have less than 100,000 followers. Uh, the other thing that you asked me about was, was um, how, how are they different from a host? And the thing that I think people have to remember with an influencer is the influencer themselves, they are a brand and they have a style, they have a look, they have a cadence, they have a means of communicating with their audience, which is why they have the follow. Are you hot or what? <laughs> you're just, you're just. Nobody could see me doing that. I was absolutely <laughs> that was a good shot. Oh, like this. It's hot by the beach. Um, so and, and so you have to remember that the influencer themselves is a brand. So you, they're not, they're just not parroting information. It's not someone that just has collected all these people to follow them and that they're going to say exactly what that that brand that's hiring them wants them to say. So they're gonna do it in the way that they do it that's most effective to hit their target. Um, and I think that that's really important to understand. You're actually melding two brands together, the product and the brand of whoever that influencer is. And that's a little bit different than a host. I, do you think that it's a lot of work? It's more work to be a to be an Instagram influencer in that respect because it's a, it's a daily grind, right? I, well, it is a daily grind, but I, th I think the thing that's most important is that they have to be authentic to who they are at all times. And it's a daily, it's a daily and obligation. You, you have to, have to, you have to yeah, you have to post and give information and share and engage daily. All the time, all the all time. The time. All yeah. the time. Yeah. People, think, people think Instagram is just like, put a pretty picture and put a comment or put a pretty picture and put a caption. But that is, if you wanna build your audience and you wanna build no like and trust, right? And you want to be an influencer for a brand or whatever. It is a boatload of work. It's a scary of amount of work because you're literally there speaking to these people, you know, of course, of and course. It's, it's I, when I finally figured that out, I said, eh, I'm not too uh, doing it. And I and think here's the other thing is I think uh, influencers have opinions and you have to have an opinion and just posting, like you said, a picture on Facebook and saying, here, here's a picture of a puppy. Well, that's cute, but that's not an opinion. And I think the more people understand your opinions, whether it's about fashion, food, politics, the weather, it doesn't matter. When you have an opinion, people will attach themselves to your opinion. So I think your Instagram has to have an opinion attached to that. Yeah, it's a big business. Don't For think, sure. Don't think it's not a huge business. It's number one, it's a huge business. Number two, it takes a lot of time. And number three, yes, you can earn a lot of money, but you are committed to that brand. You're committed in ways that showing up to host a television infomercial, commercial, mm -hmm. or uh, HSN, QVC or whatever, does did not take any of that right. consumer engagement, customer engagement, brand engagement. It's a completely different world. Oh, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. And it, um, it can be incredibly lucrative. The thing that I think is great is you can really, you, it, it has to be a full-time job. If you're going to be an influencer making, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year doing it. You have to ask yourself, like, there's no shortcuts. So if, if I'm doing, if I get hired from XYZ Corporation, and they're going to pay me $150,000 a year to do my job. What are the, what expectation are they going to put on me? And that expectation is I show up for work at eight o'clock. I'm going to work till 6 p.m. at night. I may have to work on weekends. I may have to work overtime. I may have to work at night. I may have to do things I don't want to do. Part of my job is going to not be as fun. But when you're your own boss, creating your own brand, you have to do exactly the same thing. Exactly. So, so Kelly's asking us a question, and and Kelly, it's quite all right for you to chime in on any question you want to ask. Do you have suggestions on getting an influencer to endorse your product, if you're a brand? Like, um, well, what does that really mean? It's the, the I, I from the way I interpret the question is like, how do you get these influencers to, oh. to comment on what, well, what you have? influencer actually how do you get an influencer to endorse your product well let's say this kelly 
is this because your product is not, let's just assume it's your product, that your product is not a well-known brand and you're looking for maybe a micro-influencer or an influencer that will speak to your, about your product to their audience? Can you answer that question for me, please? Now I'm throwing it back to you, Kelly. <laughs> now it's a conversation. <laughs> So we'll see what Kelly says, but I have a feeling there's a lot of people or a lot of smaller businesses that think that uh, all I have to do, I just came from the houseware show and they were saying it to me all the time. All the investors were saying, all I have to do is just send my product to an influencer, they'll use it and then they'll talk about it. Right, but, here, but here's what's really interesting. That's true, they might, talk, they might talk about it, but it doesn't mean that they're gonna talk about it in a way that you like what they're saying. Yeah. Because influencers, again, are about an opinion. So if I send something to an influencer and an influencer receives that, um, they might not like it. They might say, this is the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. So the result, you know, uh, the result may not be what you expect. But that's not the most effective way to get your product out through an influ influencer. It's a conversation you have with that influencer ahead of time. What the expectations, do they like it? Will they review it? Are they willing to, uh, to reference websites, how to buy it? It's one thing to say, this is just a really great product. I love this. But if I'm not telling the person on the other side, like how much does it cost? It. Where can I get it? How do I buy it? Then it doesn't matter. Then I'm just having, then it's just bragging rights by someone. So you have to actually engage in that construct of how that engagement will happen with their audience. And it's usually a, almost like a, uh, an outline form. We need this messaging with this kind of visual and make sure we hit these points. Um, and then there's a value to that. You're, you're accessing their audience, just like you would access an audience watching a TV show at night. There's an audience. And because you're accessing an audience, there's a value to that. And that's when, that's when the negotiation comes into play in terms of what is the value to you as a as uh, an inventor to have that influencer talk about your product and, and direct their audience to a place where they can buy that product. Oh yeah, that that's usually boils down to moolah, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't that mm -hmm. boil down to, to money, right? So that's where of you course. come in. Of course, yep. That's where you come in. And what yep. does a typical, not, not, to, not to beat the influencer horse to death, but I think I'm, it's almost dead. So let me ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. um, what could one expect? What's the range in, in, in payment? What do deals look like? I mean, I know you uh, don't really like to talk about deals, but I'm asking you the question anyway. Um, I have gotten deals as high as $400,000 a post for multiple posts on one product. So companies are willing to pay certain influencers almost a half a million dollars per post. And they will write that check over and over and over. Now the benefit to that and what you have to, what you have to remember is if that influencer has a, a way to capture the attention or has an audience of 100 million followers, and even if just you know 10% engage, or 5%, you get a 5% engagement, that's 5 million people that are engaging with you about that product. You can't get that on any TV show anymore. You don't get that. You watch daytime TV and you're lucky if they get a million viewers on the daytime show. Yeah, you're not gonna get, you're, well, and then you can't really quantify that. I mean, they might have viewed it, but you know, they went to the bathroom or they're making right. coffee or whatever. There, yeah, that's a, it's a passive engagement when they're watching TV, because you're right, or, there's, or they're, they're fast forwarding through a commercial. When, when you have an influencer and you have someone engaging with them, that is a, that's an active um, behavior. Right, um, well, I, I think that's why they call it an influencer. Well, an influencer is, is more than just providing information, but then to also cause action, to influence a, a, a behavior, influence a belief, influence right. a, a, a purchase. Right. So let me, let me, I, I need to back up because Blair, you cited, uh, I wish you wouldn't talk about the deals you make for me. The, the <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well, we won't then. You said you told everybody, so 
I do work for a little bit cheaper than that on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> to put all kidding aside, yeah, that isn't a typical influencer. Right. So that so let's talk. So fans. here, so I work with someone that is a beauty influencer. She has about sixty thousand followers. Not a lot but through Instagram. She is active on her social media and her or, or through Instagram, and her engagement rate is very high. And what I mean by very high is it's about eight, nine percent. So every time she posts, about nine percent of her followers will engage with her. They'll like it, they'll watch it, they'll comment, they'll do a thumbs up, some type of an engagement. She can what was that? Do they buy? Don't know. Don't mm -hmm. always know. Mm -hmm. Um, but she can get fifteen thousand dollars a post. Not so bad. So you have fifteen thousand dollars a post. You have fifty thousand followers. You know, you you do that four times a year. Yeah, and that's sixty grand extra off four posts, and that and that'll get lost in your in your feed. I mean, you're you're not like one of these people that's posting and from every uh, so they, every brand all the time. I mean, you can. The brand isn't expecting you to be posting all the time. So when you're negotiating a deal for an influencer, you're negotiating, mm -hmm. you're, you're basically saying, Mr. Brand, you're, yep. we're going to give you X amount of posts and X amount of time for X amount of dollars, period. That's basically kind of the crux. Yeah, it's, well, the person with the money always has the power and they always have the control. So it's usually the other way around. So the person with the money, the, 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 the product will go to the influencer and say, for X, let's say for $50,000, we want three posts. Two of them are video posts. One is a static post. In every post, you must contain the following hashtags. The video post must be in this environment. So you give them, you it's, give like them a, a, it, it's like a uh, RFP or it's a, you know, it's a, what, what do they call that thing? And when when you do a production, they're going to give you an outline. This is what we want. Yeah, this is the creative. Creative the, brief. Yeah, creative brief. So they get that so that they know what the brand is looking for. And they have you guidelines, know? you know. So of course, of yeah. course. So the, so then they so they use those guidelines and, and put it in an environment that matches that influencer. So if the influencer, for example, is uh, a young lady that's always posting bikini shots on the beach, you can't then ask that influencer to put herself in a, you know, in a uh, track suit and go inside. Like you, she's going to take that post and take it to her environment. So you have to know that as a, as a brand, when you go to an influencer that you are stepping, you're stepping into their world. You're taking your product into their world. And it's a very serious thing. It's not, it's not something that you should take lightly. Right, right, right. For sure. For sure. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. all right. Well, thank you very much for all of that wonderful information. You're We're not done yet. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I'm kidding. Uh, hey. Uh, this is what we do anyway when we're at lunch, Wendy, is we just talk like this and. I know. Okay, so might so, as well put cameras on us. Well, we we might as well, except for I have better lighting than you do. Except I'm getting a little shiny. You so, are? Is are, my lighting bad? No. I don't know. It's a little dark because I think the sun's going down. Oh, Can yeah. Turn on? Why? You want, you want to turn on a light? You got a lights in that house? Do I have lights in the house? Could afford those. I might be able to shift a little bit. I, Get no. a little bit better? A little no. bit better? No. Oh, now little, we're getting a whole view of uh, Blair. A little bit better. A oh, little bit oh, better. Look at that. That's nice. Is that I like nice? The artwork. I like the composite composition. You're still nice. in the dark. You move right into the light, though, when you move. Move into the light, Carol Ann. I don't know, Wendy. Okay. You know. You look great. Um, we have another. So, Renee, I have to read this before I put it up there. And I'm going to walk around and look for some fun lighting. <gasps> that's nice. Is that fun? Yeah, no, like, I can't just I like hold it around. You can just do that. Okay, so, <laughs> oops, turn that one off, turn this one on. Okay, so Renee, hi Renee. Hi Renee. Uh, um, Renee is asking, Hulu has a new series starring Andy Bryant of SNL. AD Bryant, uh-huh. Well, AD, AD Bryant. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, oh yeah, I've watched it. It's called Shrill. And my yeah. young friend's original songs were selected to be featured on this episode. I'd love to share, hope you don't mind. What? Are you standing? 
Are you spamming All my right. Renee? Okay, I'm taking you Renee! off. Renee! Renee, what are you doing, <laughs> Renee? Exactly. Renee. 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 Oh, okay, Renee. Wait, I gotta figure out how to turn you off. Sorry, Renee. That's not the kind of stuff that we do on this show. I love the show. We're not those kind of people, Renee. Yeah, really. I gotta get used to this platform. Oh. Spot people like you. No, Renee, thank you for watching. Yes, we, 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 I'll talk to you later. Um, Renee's looking out for her friends. And I, oh, I like that, Blair. I kind of like the roaming camera effect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Don't, like get, don't get used to it, Cooper. <laughs> I can't move anywhere. I'm surrounded. You I, are. I am surrounded. Oh, it said, oh, we have to end the broadcast because we're going a little too long. Facebook is giving me the cue. Oh, okay. So, anyway. There's the cue. Yeah, it says end broadcast. I don't know why, but I don't want to end it. Anyway. We'll have okay. to come back for a part two at some point, Wendy. Yes. Oh, God, Blair. You're already booking yourself again. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what he does. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody wants to get a hold of Blair, you uh, visit Blair at, he has a beautiful website. It's taylortalentservices.com. Um, you can okay. learn more about Blair there. He, he really is the man when it comes to influencers, hosts. Who else do you like to represent? You don't represent sports. Celebrities. Right? I have athletes. I have chefs. I have fitness trainers. I have doc tons of doctors. I I've got you know singers. What? You know yeah. who you don't have? Hmm. Hmm. Did you see my what I just put up on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if anything comes your way, comes my way for you, I'll give you a call. I know where to find you. I, I asked you a long time ago. I said you should be representing podcast hosts. You did, and then and then you started out this this uh, session by telling us how lousy that opportunity was. For you. Well, it was just getting oversaturated. Podcasting yeah, is oversaturated. For sure. Yeah, and if for you're sure. a big person and you have a lot of money and a name, then going to podcasting. But if you're just a regular Joe like me, just a regular yeah. Joe, a regular a, a regular Wendy like you. Yes. But anyway, Blair, um, thanks. It was fun. What can I it say? It was a good time. I yeah. will, um, I'll see you soon. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, my email address is on my website. Yeah, it is. And then you can also make comments like, I'm sure that this is probably, I'm going to share it. Are you going to share this on your, share this video? Hello. Share I guess I am. And, uh, and then you can, don't bug Blair though. He's much, much, much too busy for judgment. <laughs> like I'm in. very important. <laughs> no, go ahead and bug. It's totally yeah, fine. Bug All right. It's I love fine. you. I love you. I love you, love you too. All right. All right so honey. See you later. Have a good night. All right. You Bye. too. Thanks Bye. everyone for, for watching. We'll see you next time.